Um, speculation in general is defined if firms, traders, investors take positions purely on expectations of future price movements, typically with a view to benefit from the expected price movements. Now, when it comes to commodities, uh, oil, non-energy commodities, uh, what has been the focus of the recent debate on speculations is on position taking in commodity derivative markets, where people buy oil futures, for example, or they buy off-the-counter derivatives, such as total return swaps on commodity indices. The bad I think there are a number of reasons why speculation has a bad reputation. Um, first, at times of price increases, uh, defining or finding uh, or blaming the guilt to speculators is easy. Often, for example, if you look, sometimes you have supply shocks, or what we call supply shocks, harvest shortfalls, other reasons why suddenly the supply is not forthcoming. Um, it's hard to take measures to correct for these shortfalls. On the other hand, to blame a speculator is always easy. In that sense, there are also political economy reasons. In fact, uh, policymakers often don't have the instruments to uh, influence or correct the situation in commodity markets on short notice. Or uh, it will be very costly. Basically, it will mean, for example, that the government has to make up for the shortfall, which they may not be in a position to do. So in that case, again, blaming anonymous speculators is relatively easy. And then finally, uh, there has been a long uh, concern about whether speculation is stabilizing or, de or, de or destabilizing. Um, one can, in theory, think of situations where st uh, speculation may not be helpful. Uh, if you have uh, examples such as herding or cornering the market by some uh, of some speculators. So, but that is a different issue. I think... Uh, Overall, um, is the role of bad speculators, so to speak, tends to be overrated on many occasions. Um, let me talk a bit about the recent changes in uh, commodity derivative markets. That's the financial markets we're particularly interested in. What has happened is that these markets have expanded in size. Many new investors have entered these markets. That has changed the markets. The question is how has it changed the markets? Has it altered the, um, the balance? Have, um, as there is sometimes a concern, have these uh, new uh, investors or the new market participants have to introduce noise. If you look at recent research, there is much less evidence that these new participants in commodity derivative markets have introduced much noise. In fact, some of these investors are quite sophisticated. They have uh, their own ways to track commodity market fundamentals. Nevertheless, it would be naive to think that this doesn't have any impact on the market, but the impact on the market can be more subtle. For example, if you have more investors who are willing to take risk in commodity markets, the price of that risk will go down. It can also be that if you look at the relationship between risk in commodity derivative market or in commodity markets and risk in other markets that there may be now a closer correlation because some of the new institutional investors in these markets look not only at commodity markets they look also at financial markets and also there there's some evidence of that but this is not by necessarily a distortion in the market nor does it necessarily have a big or significant impact on the price level but it may change uh, the nature of fluctuations or variations over time. Um, let me start, go back to 2008. I think it's helpful to recall the final uh, two, three months of 2008. 
where there's a dramatic turn to the worse in the global economy, where the world was seen at the sort of an abyss, uh, that all, the floor was taken away from the world economy. There was were sharp revisions to global growth, actual industrial production plummeted by more than 10% uh, in levels. Um, and the expectations were that there wouldn't be a quick turnaround. So oil prices and other commodity prices fell by large percentages. But then there came a fairly quick turnaround. And the turnaround was particularly prominent in or uh, important in emerging economies, which have become the, where the marginal demand has come from in commodity markets. So if you look at the oil market, for example, today, oil demand is already above where it was before the turn to the worst in 2008. Um, if you look at the last two years, so global growth has been much stronger than expected. Global industrial production has been much stronger than expected. And oil demand has surged to new heights. At the same time, supply has initially be, has been quite elastic. There was some spare capacity in markets. But if we look at recent, uh, especially in 2011, um, there have been a number of supply shocks. The events in Libya are well known. At the same time, there were really downward revisions to non-OPEC production. Overall, the market has been tight in the sense there was a deficit between demand and supply that was broadly met by a decrease in inventories. So I think today we are in a very different situation from the fall and the winter of 2008 and early 2009. Uh, as, to floor, as to a floor, I would be um, hesitant to call a floor. I think at the moment uh, market participants don't necessarily expect rapid or dramatic changes in either uh, demand or supply. But I think what is clear is, if you look at the experience of the past two years, the marginal high cost barrel, say tar sand, deep sea exploration, where production costs are thought to be close to $80 a barrel or even higher, is needed in the market. So as long as this perception is there, I don't think uh, the price will turn. Um, there are reasons why financial markets are regulated, right? Um, there are a number of issues, for example, investor protection. There are also systemic issues in the sense um, that there are externalities, possible externalities from problems in financial markets. It is well known, for example, in banking, that if there is all of a sudden a turn to the worse for an individual bank, that this could trigger bank runs, that, can, that this can sort of lead to instabilities in situations of so-called multiple equilibria. Uh, that's a reason why, for example, most countries now have deposit insurance, so that they wouldn't uh, to exclude or make it more difficult to have runs on banks. There are similar externalities in other markets which call for regulation. Um, so when it comes to commodity derivative markets, I think uh, an important reason for regulation is, is in part uh, to maintain market integrity, integri what we call market integrity, to keep the markets well functioning. And there are a number of issues there. I think there has been traditionally a role for exchanges that limit the size of individual market participants to avoid that markets are being cornered. And there is a long tradition that goes back. Uh, that was a supervisory function, which often was initially taken by the exchanges themselves. Another uh, issue is, say, in some parts of commodity derivative markets in over-the-counter uh, derivative markets. There is, is an issue of transparency and there is an issue of whether these markets can be sources of systemic risk. 
part of this risk is not necessarily only related to commodity markets, but also because more participants in commodity mark, uh, derivative markets operate in other derivative markets. So for example, that is where issues such as central clearing comes in to re reduce counterparty risk that could sort of lead to contagion to other markets from commodity derivative markets or to contagion from to commodity derivative markets from other sense. So there is an issue of regulation. And as markets become more global, as there are new participants, as there is a lot more cross-border uh, trading, uh, the regulatory framework has to be upgraded.